Talk about it all here on the Jordy Colada Show. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. You know, one thing about Jaden that I've tried to talk to him about is tightening his chin strap. Because he doesn't tighten it. So every time he gets hit, it looks like his helmet's all messed up. And it's like, oh, God, he just got rocked. For the win! Good! It's good! LSU does it! After a fucking Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, boys! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, uh, LSU fan came stuck his finger in my boot. <laughs> that ball my the heart. Fan brought his two grandkids by and literally was just 30 seconds. Just wanted to say thank you for the team and the season and what you did and, and how much it means to everybody here is, is truly what makes LSU special. Yeah. Kelly, we're official. Finally, I'm getting a chance to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just, there's Jordy. Money through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collider Show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we get the lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordy Collider Show. Yeah. Day. Nice okay. start. Here's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, sir. How much? Which are they? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Jordy Colada Show live here from my Click Here Digital Studios on this Thursday morning. Appreciate everybody starting your day here with us. Happy early Easter weekend to you if you're out there. We're going to be off tomorrow, no show. So everybody enjoy the three-day weekend as uh, we'll get started tomorrow. He has risen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, celebrate and uh, hope everybody is uh, is safe. Uh, a man who is uh, is collecting this weekend is Malik Neighbors after yesterday's yes. performance. What a day for Malik mm. Neighbors! I think uh, maybe I, I, I really and truly I, I would make this argument if I'm if I'm in the room and I'm a scout and I was there yesterday and I know Marvin Harrison is this can't miss prospect from a wide receiver standpoint, but we just saw arguably. The guy that you know is in the debate of of being right there with him with wide you know as wide receiver one selected off the board, and he goes out and performs like that, and, and the other guy decides not to work out. I don't blame Harrison for not working out. I wouldn't have blamed Neighbors if he doesn't work out, right? I mean, I haven't seen a mock draft that has Neighbors outside of the top six. That's a lot of money, guaranteed coming at you in, in in less than a month why go risk it or believe and bet on yourself and stamp home that you are the number one wide receiver in this draft and I, I don't know how you don't look at yesterday's performance at any level as a fan a teammate a coach a scout a GM and say that's the guy I mean 
He runs sub 4-3. He jumps 40. His hands look like they're off of a UFO. <laughs> and he catches everything. At this point, I don't care how good Harrison is. Right? I mean, one guy bet on himself, said, I, I was the best wide receiver in college football all season long. My numbers said it. I was the biggest player in the biggest games. I was the best wide receiver from start to finish. And you robbed me of the Bolitnikoff Award. Robbed him. I mean, th this, this season should have an asterisk next to the Bolitnikoff Award. And the asterisk should say, it did not go to the best wide receiver. I mean, Malik Neighbor's performance yesterday was just a continuation of everything he did during the fall on Saturdays. Hammer home that he's the best wide receiver in 2024. He's the best wide receiver in college football, and he's the best wide receiver going into the NFL draft. That's not disparaging or disrespecting Marvin Harrison at all. In his own right, he's a top five, top six pick, and physically, he's an alien. But one guy proved it every single Saturday. And then he goes to Pro Day and he performs. He, he does that? Like, I got to be honest. I, I was thinking to myself, he may or may not work out. If he does work out, he's going to freak some people out. Like, he's going he's gonna to be standout. I didn't think he was going to do that. I mean, that was, you compare his numbers next to Jamar Chase. He's Jamar Chase. Which is crazy to compare to, right? Like, I, you wouldn't think that the measurable, the measurables would be the same. No. Like, I, I thought, I didn't think he would measure at 6'3". I thought 6'1", just by watching He didn't play. measure at 6'3". Was it 6'1"? 6 foot. Yeah, 6 foot, what, 200? Yeah, 6 foot, 200. I guess I thought Jamar might have been 6'3", just because of the way he played. He plays 6'3". Right, and then you, saw, you see Malik, and everything is the same, if not better, which is mind-blowing. But this is why you run. This is why you go test. If you're, if you in the day and age of the NFL draft, when scouts are looking for anything to, whether it be prove their case or disprove their case, this is an argument for look at, look at what Malik can do. Like Stewie was saying, like put on the tape, and we're big. Like we just watch the film, and you can see it. But when you do that in front of people, and you have, you can confirm it with the stopwatch. Like all right, the tape matches what he puts on film, or the the time matches what he puts on film it becomes, okay, this is validated. Like, all right, he's a legit 4.35 guy, jumps 42 inches. Okay, and then he did 15 reps at 225. That's things, it becomes almost, and then you have another guy that believes is believed to be the number one wide receiver off the board, but you, you don't have any of the information to validate it in terms of what scouts like to look at. Like, they want the hand time. They want the tangible, like, I want to see it with my eyes, as opposed to, like, anybody can turn on the tape and watch it and know those are guys are one and two. But when you put out the information of, here's me at Pro Day. This is what it looks like in person. That's where you start to have, all right, Marvin Harrison Jr., you can sit there on the sidelines and have your reputation speak for itself. Malik's the last thing and the best thing you just saw. I agree. And I think, you know, I've always been a huge advocate for the tape speaks for itself. You don't need what, you know, my, one of my, my, my favorites, Mike Dettelier, would call the underwear Olympics. Right. You don't need to go through it to prove that this guy can play football. But for whatever reason, the NFL scouts want to see this stuff. They, they, they have a high demand for this. And you can make a lot of money if you perform in it. And for Malik Neighbors' standpoint, like, like we said, he didn't have to do it. I mean, if, if he decides not to work out yesterday, his draft status really doesn't necessarily move. I, I think... He only had something outside looking in to lose if he worked out, was, would, would have been my thought. But that's weak-minded. I mean, that's, that's not the way to think from a, uh, an aggressive, I'm the best, let me bet on myself mentality that Malik, neighbor, that, that Malik Neighbors proved, showed, and should be compensated for that. I mean, this guy was absolutely robbed of the Bolitnikoff Award. It's a shame that you're not going to be able to take your kids, your kids' kids, to Tiger Stadium and see neighbor's face 
on the outside facade showing what happened during the 2023-2024 season where he was the best player in the sport at that position. He, he doesn't get his face on the outside of being All-American. Yeah, he will, but he won't. Front, it, right? But he won't. It won't be on the Bolitnikoff Award yeah. winners, and he won't be in the trophy room. Yep. You know, and, and 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 that's something that gets lost in translation along the way. I'm not saying that Malik Neighbors will get lost in history of LSU, but I mean that means something. What do you think that would mean to Neighbors' grandkids coming back around, being like, "Yo, my pops used to dice him up in the SEC back in 2023," <laughs> right? And don't forget this about Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors, at one point, was committed to Mississippi State and would have crawled on glass for an LSU offer. Would have walked over fire to play for LSU. When his LSU offer came, he didn't even have a chance to blink. He flipped on Mississippi State and stayed home and came to Louisiana. This has always and will forever be my point on you always start recruiting LSU football at home first. Malik Neighbors was a two-star, three-star? I know he was suspended his senior year and you didn't have film on him the last, the last year he played, which was uh, debatable in itself. But he doesn't play his senior year. He goes to Mississippi State, commits there at a camp, comes back to LSU, camps here. LSU takes a gamble on him, commits here. He's arguably the best receiver in the history of, of the program. Say that out loud. But more importantly, I think it's, it's more of an example and, and not with any type of aggressive nature or tone. It's just the example of, hey, Brian Kelly, you're at LSU. These are the guys. You don't have to travel the earth to go chase four and five star, three, four and five star guys when a two star in your backyard could end up being the third overall pick in the draft and arguably the best prospect that exists in this year's NFL draft. After what he did yesterday, I don't know how you could argue it. He was a four star. Hot three star, four star, yeah, but... I didn't know he didn't play his senior year. Yeah, he got. He was suspended because he transferred. Was he not? A, was he not a three star? No, he 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 was a four star. He transferred Damn from. Damn, Stewie. <laughs> your facts. He, Great story. He transferred from Como High to Southside High, which is Como High is like kind of close to Youngsville, still in Lafayette. It's in that area, but Southside High was a new school in Youngsville that had just been built and they had just started a football team. But his best friend was the quarterback at Southside. So he transferred to Southside to play with him for their Suspended. senior year. Como caught wind of him transferring, blocked the transfer. All kind of stuff happened with you know, the LHSA. Some, some LHSA, LHSA, LHSA nonsense. Uh, nonsense. Trey Des Green can't play basketball. Imagine being the coach at Southside. Like, I think I got us yeah. one. Imagine being the Zachary basketball coach. What do you mean he can play football? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> coach, I would cause a riot. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, goodness. I would go – Nuclear. But that was even more damning is his quarterback at, at Como was Trey Harris, the number one receiver at Ole Miss wow. right now. So it's like it's it's so wild it, what happens in that area of, of how kids move around and of how course. they can't move around, how adults will make kid will have decisions over what kids do. It's just it's crazy. I and mean, imagine, but this is a it's an even big, like bigger test case for LSU and coming to LSU because if he goes to Mississippi State, you don't have this. Oh. Like you, I mean, they uh, everything was standing. He's he would be his junior year in a new offense that looked absolutely oh. porous. He'd have been awesome his probably freshman sophomore year with Leach. But then this year he'd have disappeared, he'd and been then a now, with oh yeah, oh, been a killer. It, oh, but, you can't, but then you have a junior year. It's like what happened to Malik Neighbors? Like you already see Xavier Thomas leaving Mississippi State. Like there's a test case of him. Like all right, look at what Malik did going to LSU, getting on that platform, and then you have the brand of what happens at Pro Day, where you have what 200 people there, all there to watch you just to run and jump, and then you put on a show like that. It's like all right, I'm now I might be the first off the board. Uh, shout out to our crew at Pro Day representing us yesterday. It was Stewie, Noah, Christian, Christian. you snuck in. Yeah, Christian yeah. snuck in. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Got him in. Um, Not another teen movie. Excellent <laughs> work. Social media everywhere yesterday. Uh, the boys were Tingle. moving yesterday at a fast pace. It was good to see uh, our stuff was uh, was being used all over 
Uh, I think we saw, I saw Caleb Williams retweeted. We, we, we were everywhere. Coach. <laughs> I mean, we were everywhere. We, we, we were all over. Had, had the sight lines. Yeah, uh, you know, but great work. Great work by Noah uh, yeah. Stewie and the team uh, out there yesterday. Uh, Malik Neighbors couldn't have done any better. Lost in the shuffle was Brian Thomas, yeah. I guess. I mean, right? he, he, did, he, he really just ran routes. So it was like you kind of <laughs> know what you get with Brian Thomas. He made a catch with his like over his shoulder with his fingertips, and it was probably one of the more beautiful catches out that you'll there. see. Yeah, but I yeah. think he did the combine, so he's yeah. like, I'm good on I, and I don't need you, you got this tape on Brian Thomas where it's like seventeen touchdowns and, later. And some people are saying that Malik Neighbors is the stud wide receiver and Brian Thomas is the flashy wide receiver because they think that Malik Neighbors has more dog in him than Brian Thomas does. <laughs> I, I but would they not, I would not, I they would should not, not, I would not, I would not. I think I think a lot of people don't really understand yes. Brian Thomas because he doesn't speak a lot. He's not as outspoken mm-hmm. and as as like Malik is Malik more is of like a walking, in your face yeah, type yeah, of deal, right, right, right. where Brian Thomas is more like Patrick Queen. Right, I'm a, a bit more quiet. Right, I'm gonna put it on your head. And I might not even say anything. I'm gonna just walk away. You know, just I'm yeah. just making my money quietly. I don't, Shy, but anybody who is uh, right, if you know, you watching know. Brian Thomas <laughs> knows that since a very very young age he has been <laughs> that dude. and has been an easy call. Like whatever he wants to do, he'll be a lottery pick in basketball. Or be a top ten pick in football. I mean, what was the last projection on him? Eleven? Yeah. I well, mean, twelve. You know. I mean, he I started mean, off like maybe a first rounder, right. then the combine. I mean, they were trying to get him back. I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> me, that got respected. You watched you know, that but bowl I mean, game. At the end of the day, he's a top ten pick. You're right. And right? that's what Brian Kelly talked about that. He was asked about like retention and what NIL can do to bring guys back. He's like, well, in, in the terms of Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, it's a uh, you can't really compete with seventeen million dollars as a signing bonus. <laughs> right. He's like, but for like the third and fourth, or like the second and third day guys, like, yeah, that's what NIL can be for is to retain guys. But and I think they swung and missed a little bit on maybe a Makai Wingo who also, Oof. he, I mean, he, his comments, yeah, hurt crushed yesterday. What of Mason Smith and Makai Wingo but talking that, about how they didn't they know. didn't know who the defensive line? Yes, coach was that be. was that was very that I mean, came that from was, Pete Jenkins, oh! huh? And. Like, like I was talking. I talked. We talked to Jock the other day, and I was talking to Jock at practice. We were at practice watching Makai Wingo and Mason Smith watch the defensive line go through drills, oh, and it was just gosh, that is painful. It's like, like Jay Johnson said, it's like watching your death. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, remember what like, it's like. I don't want to watch this, but I have to. But that's what NIL would have been for is to bring those two guys back. Then Makai shows out in the short shuttle, and it's like, okay, this is. I mean, mm-hmm. he's going to get drafted. But if he had come back. Makai is a little bit of a different case of what more is there for him to prove? Like, this yeah, is the player that you're getting. I agree. He's not going to grow three inches. Mason Smith is a, man, if you put it all together and you produce at the college level, then it's a no-doubt first-round pick. And Pete Jenkins was the one that kind of broke the story of he was trying to get Mason Smith to come back, but he couldn't sell him on the defensive line coach. And that was ultimately he makes the decision to go pro. The next day, LSU makes the hire. And it mm. was like, oh. if I could have been able to sell Coach Davis – then I think we would have had a better chance to retain Mason Smith. But him not knowing, it make, it almost makes the decision for him of, I'm not All coming right, back to what I, I just go. walked into last year because Pete's like, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> so, like, you can't drag me out of the casket again. I'm not gonna come back. <laughs> Put me in the all blacks and make me <laughs> fight for my life against Missouri. Him sitting Give me that. the bucket hat and the rain jacket, for God's sake. Him sitting just on the bench by himself in Missouri, like, I don't think we got. I don't know where we didn't I'm practice at. enough. I'm, at some point, I'm going back and watching every play of the Missouri game to and, find and time he... stamping when Pete Jenkins nearly gets lost his life on the side. I'm telling you, it is an eyelash of uh, of nearly uh, uh, just watching death yeah. on the <laughs> SEC network at the 11 o'clock slot. <laughs> I mean, like, Jenkins almost not died. only do we have a comeback in the Heisman Trophy winner playing his best game of the regular season, arguably. Pete Jenkins is about I mean, the death almost, of a legend. <laughs> almost killed him, man. Off of a, off of a reverse. From his, I mean, it was like just some... I mean, Jake is just standing cross-armed. <laughs> Bring back the... <laughs> I dare you. Hit me. Yeah. I'm here for it all. This is the way I deserve to go. <laughs> I mean, because, like, the 80s teams, like, Ruff and Rodri, God rest his soul, rest in peace, Ruff. Uh, and, like, Mickey Gidry and Tommy Hodson, and those, the, the stories they tell about Pete Jenkins, 
like when he was in his prime, when he would be like walking around the locker room years like ago. naked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And be like telling jokes at everybody. What's up, boys? Yeah, right. <laughs> Picking fights like a, you know, a young Ogeron. Right. Uh, I'm um, the alpha in this room. Right. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. <laughs> to, I mean, but that's the story of Pete. Like he never lost that because right, I don't he think he was mentality. No, he was. I don't think he was staring death in the face and didn't blink. Right. And then three plays later, he's in the referee's ass. And it's like, <laughs> oh, the old Pete's back. You just need to wake him up a little bit. But <laughs> had to get back in to get the juices flowing. <laughs> Give me an IV. <laughs> Took me a quarter and a half, but I'm here. Is the game started? <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, Pete, you just nearly got killed. Ah, <laughs> uh, back. <laughs> See, smell assault. Where's the referee? Yeah, that was this definitely holding. This is what I do. <laughs> holding every play. They're holding Mason Smith. He's offsides. They're holding Carl Dunbar. Coach, he was on the '88 team. <laughs> Same play. <laughs> is that Eric Hill? <laughs> But that's a, that was probably what he was thinking is first of all not coming back and <laughs> the talent that was that isn't yeah, there and the I'm coaching not. job he had to do just to even field the team because these boys have been coached up and now you reverse that with bringing in Coach Davis who by all accounts is the best defensive line coach in the country at least he's had time yeah but now you don't have the players if you just add one Ooh, of those guys you feel so them. much better about the defensive line one of room. Them. that man sweats so much so Davis. he's yes. working. Always working. Like, he just – yesterday he came out the locker room. It was like he just came out of a workout. I'm sure he did. Yeah, probably so. Welcome home. Omar <laughs> Spates. You, you got 30, I got 31. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember Daily, we're brought to you by our friends over at Hughes Mechanical Contractors. Travis Hughes and the crew located in Zachary. Got an office on the North Shore so they can help you all along I-10 here in South Louisiana. Anywhere you're listening along the I-10 corridor from Lafayette to New Orleans, get in touch with our crew over at Hughes Mechanical Contractors that can help you out with your AC today, whether it's commercial or residential. They're a trusted Dykin dealer. Get in touch with Travis and his crew online at HughesMechanical.net is where you find them online or call them at 225-658-2147. Hughes Mechanical Contractors online at HughesMechanical.net. Uh, Travis Hughes and the crew, trusted Dykin dealer. As always, we appreciate his support. So, Yesterday, it was all about Malik Neighbors. I think Malik Neighbors, uh, obviously the bias of being down here, but I mean, you look at what's being said about him publicly and what's being said around him uh, nationally about what he really hammered home yesterday, and I just don't know how you can't nudge him ahead in the argument of being mm. wide receiver one going into the draft, and it's just the fact that, you know, it's the last thing that you see, and that's the, the, the world of, of football, really. It's kind of the world in general, but I mean... You know, I mean, I get that Malik Na that that Malik Neighbors versus Marvin Harrison doesn't have the bloodline and the name and the All American, you know, and the the, the All Pro father, former dad. Um, Talk to daddy. Yeah, I mean, not the All American. <laughs> yeah, not the All American boy. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but I get that Marvin Harrison is a once in a generation type prospect. But I mean. At what point don't you just look at Malik Neighbors and you say, "All right, I mean, come on, yeah. this is what are we doing? What are we doing here?" Tell I mean, us. you robbed him of the Bolitnikov. I mean, he he diced up the SEC. Anybody he, he you put in front of him, from Alabama to Florida, I mean, he he crushed. He, he's got to be the number one wide receiver in the draft. If he's not, all right, so. Jaden Daniels yesterday was the other storyline. And Daniels went through like a plus 55 place script. I think it was like 58. Mm -hmm. 58 drawing. plays. Um, Look good. I mean. I, I know there's some chat on, on social media that he was. I, I just think that there's some like built in disrespect and hate towards Daniels. I don't, it, I don't think it that is, there's a lot and, of. But like, I mean, did he throw the ball bad at all? No, but it's, it's not much you could take away from like stuff like that. It's, he's throwing on air. Like, like at the end what, of the day, we I mean, are did getting. Did he do anything bad? No, he didn't. But that's. I mean, he has some. He has some overthrows. But it was like. I'll take that. I'll take an overthrow in a throwing session where you're trying to show arm strength. I'll take an overthrow. And, I don't. And, and like, I was talking to somebody who was like was a scout, and he was like, "It's nothing you could really like." He didn't do anything to hurt himself, but he didn't do anything that like wild either. So it's like. It's just a normal throwing session in a scheduled environment. Yeah, you're not going to go Jamarcus Russell in there where it's like, oh, my God, no this is no what no it no looks no like. No. I mean, because you talked about Todd McShay yesterday where he said that to this day 
He said, I've never been more fooled than I was fooled by Jamarcus Russell. He's like, everybody Did left. Did Jay said it yesterday? Yeah, no, yeah. but no, he said it before, but yeah, you yeah, said yeah. it yesterday. Yeah. And he's like, to this day, I still feel the exact same yeah. I feel about Jamarcus. Like, nobody left that building. It go, that didn't say he wasn't the number one overall pick. He goes, looking back on it, we should have known because after every session, Jamarcus was like asking for a chair to sit down to talk with the media. He's like, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Like, looking back on it, like, he fooled us all, but he was like, he was pouring sweat. He was tired. And you don't really see that at Pro Days where guys are worn out. But what Pro Day does give you is for guys with that kind of arm talent to make you go, okay. Like Joe Mixon yesterday. That's what I was. That's who I was going to bring up. Was he throws at ninety yards? I mean, Mixon, and it's like Joe Milton. Milton. Milton I'm sorry. Joe, Joe Mixon, Mixon is the running back. Houston, Houston Texans. Texans. Yeah. Yes. Houston Texans out? Uh huh. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been making Watch Texas. out for the Texans, coach. But Joe Milton, <laughs> like that's what his that's his time yeah. to shine. Yeah. Like watch this. No, and no. Like I can I can fix him. I mean that Jayden, almost looked like a fake throw. throw. When he let it go. Nine, they said it was I mean, 90 yards. Uh, let's see, the Joe sound Milton. of it coming out of his hand. It, I mean, scramble drill needs a little work. He was backpedaling, got a little <laughs> got a little goofy. But once he, once he threw that ball. Oh, when I saw him throw that ball. But if Jade wanted to impress at a pro day, like truly separate himself, he would have run the 40. Mm. No. No? Mm-mm. no th- but that's this the, is a Lamar Jackson situation. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think that Lamar Jackson not running the 40 – that probably set the precedent, but also how Lamar Jackson played quarterback, two-time MVP. I think, I think that narrative is kind of gone yeah. by the way. Where are you going to put Jaden Daniels? I'm just saying, like, it's just a Lamar Jackson situation in terms of, like, It hurts teams, you more than it helps yeah, you. Yeah, teams are already saying, like, he's yeah. a running quarterback, run first. He doesn't go through his reads. Like, just different little knick-knack things that they try to bring up when it gets closer to the draft. So him running would have been like, oh, all right, he runs fast, so all he wants to do is run. No, I, that, that's yeah. what, I get that point entirely, but I'm saying if you wanted to wow people, right. like if you wanted to put like what he does, I mean that's that separates that, him. Definitely, the film speaks. I was about to say that 50 yard. I mean the Florida, the Florida, the Florida film guys. 85 yards you know, later, you want to see if he can run or not? I would just. I, I mean, do, he's the best running back in the history of the program, and it's not even close. And I, I mean, running back. No, he's not the the running, running quarterback. quarterback. Oh yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, <laughs> who are we putting in that class? with him? Herb Tyler and Paralu. Herb Tyler, Paralu, and Jordan Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson. I mean, yeah, R- Russell Shepard. Far and away, never <laughs> no lined way. up in the spot. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> I just had to gauge your interest. Could you imagine the fake short side toss keeper oh, with, with Russell, Russell Shepard? Shepard? They, they ra- that means a, f- a couple of the end of rounds that they ran against North Carolina and Vanderbilt early in his sophomore season, you got like glimpses. I mean, once he turned the corner, when he take when he gets he the little gone. handoffs and just yeah, I mean, he would take like an inside trap against Bama. Oh, and, just, and he like he would juke one of those big it, linebackers. It's a video of him like running, and he's ocean, like man. that's against Auburn. When yeah, he's like, like y'all, bet this what y'all wanted to see. Like, I wanted to see a little juice now. I got, I got juice. it. Give me the ball more than twice a game. <laughs> Eight years he played in the league. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It speaks for itself. It he, does. Be, it speaks he, for itself. He makes a move on the Auburn defender. In the uh-huh. Auburn game in 2011, and he shakes him up, scores. It's just like that's the juice you're looking he, for. Nobody flashed more than Russell, oh. Russell and Trendon, where you're just like, damn, should we get it to him 15 <laughs> I need, times? I need more than this. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, Jane Daniels far and away is. I mean, there's no comparison. That's a Mount Rushmore I mean, he might be of the one best running quarterback in the history of the SEC. Yeah. Tebow and Cam. Yeah, Cam, you kind of got to go Cam. Yeah, I would just definitely go Cam one. Tebow is two up different there. styles. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you've really seen somebody that slight of frame. Manzel. Yeah, Manzel. Manzel for sure. Yeah, that's he's more of like a Manzel test case, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think he has like the wiggle. It's more straight line speed yeah. that but because he, he never put himself in those spots. But he does have like sneaky wiggle. Like it's like yeah, it's he'll different. get you. Yeah, like, he can just twitchy. get the corner. That's a, yeah, he's never put himself in the room like in a. Painted himself in a corner like Manziel would do, where it's I got to shake up three people to get out of here. Yeah. Cam would run you over, Tebow would run you over. Jaden just kind of took what they gave you. If you're all are all going to yeah. drop and not spy me, that's a whole lot of green grass for me to take. Anthony Whoop. Jennings, take I, notes. I still see Cam pulling Pat P in there. Oh, so. easy. Should have hip dropped him. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> he hip dropped Tebow. That'd have been a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Cam's open field runs were the best. Yep. Well, he can't be that he's big. He's so big. He, yeah, he was just, just so, so fast. Big and fast. But what do you think Jaden would have run in the 40? 4-3. Uh, 4-4. Four, three. Four, three, yeah. Four, four. yeah. He's a 4-3 guy. guy. He, was more, he was pumped up for Malik. 
that was who chased him down after the 40 time showed up and weeks like what are you doing here he's like bro 435 and he was he like oh ran, let's go he just busted that thing because, I, I thought the 42 inch vertical was the oh my yeah, god that's the most part. impressive I mean, because I really didn't. Exploded. I didn't think he had that much juice. Me either. I, I didn't know he had that. Because like that bouncing. was the whole thing. Like he didn't have. A lot of people were saying he doesn't have all the contested catch stats that Marvin mm-hmm. Harrison and Odunze mm-hmm. have. But then you look at a forty-two inch vertical. And if I can jump higher than you, and I have bigger hands than you, and I don't drop it's be anything. Very, very and shouldn't the talking catch. point be? I'm always open. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. I don't have like, to have contested. I'm a great catches. route runner. I mean that's that that's really what I think is overlooked in neighbors. Just kind of how, I mean he's he's you know very Xboxy. He's very PlayStation yeah, in the you, in the phone booth. I mean he's got some juice. wiggle to him that is. I, I don't know how you keep in front. Somebody I've been really keeping up with, like on the receiver thing, is Steve Smith, Ju- Steve mm-hmm. Smith Senior, and he mm-hmm. is all over the neighbors. Like he's all over. The, that's who said the flashy versus stud wide receiver with Brian Thomas and Malik. And I think it's just more of just Steve Smith not really knowing as much about Brian Thomas. but He's just trying to prop up him, Malik. Right, but he t- yeah. well, the way he talks about Malik is like he thinks Malik is wide receiver one. Like, it. It's unquestionable. Love anything that Steve Smith. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. in on Steve yeah. Smith. Good luck disagreeing with that, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm out. Steve. I'm out. Malcolm Since, Jenkins got the worst of that. Yeah. <laughs> what a day for LSU yesterday. It yeah. looked like every network was there. They had big time correspondence. I saw Lois Riddick doing live hits into Sports Center mm-hmm. from LSU. They were all over the SEC network. I thought LSU was on uh, a big billboard yesterday. Yeah. They were they they were all over the place. What was it like in there? I mean, it was. Anybody you could think of was in there. Every team was there. Uh, you had some head coaches there: Brian Dayball, Antonio Pierce. Uh, you had some alum, some LSU alum, some old coaches that coach in the NFL now. Adam Henry. I don't oh, know nice. if people remember him. Uh, yeah. Odell's coach. Did it? Yeah. Odell Dennis Johnson. Johnson. Meatball. Meatball. Just He's got introduced with the Jets. Ravens. Ra- Ravens. Wow. Ravens D line coach. Ravens. Like you know, like just yeah. a bunch of names of people who coached at LSU that are now in the league and. Like you had some, you had Will Campbell, Emory Jones, like the the underclassmen or current juniors on this team walking around talking to scouts. It, it was a, it, it was good vibes for sure. It was definitely a, a PR show for LSU. And even with all that, don't you think if Malik was able to get and Jaden, but obviously they're both going to go top eight, five, top five, six. That if they were able to get, like you talk about Bolitnikov, if they had made a legit postseason run, don't you think the Malik narrative would be a little bit different? I think I think that he gets a lot of love. Yeah, he gets. You know, he gets I, a lot I really of love. do think that he gets. But it, I mean, but when it, you watch, I mean, like to Stewie's point, when you do watch the NFL Network, Steve Smith's always throwing him love. There's always a Malik Neighbors pro segment. On yeah, like if you're watching Bucky Brooks, yeah, Daniel they, Jeremiah, I mean, they like love you go him. through the names, they love. I'm also talking about like during the college football oh, season. Oh, yeah, yeah, because this I, feels they, it feels like they kind of discovered him like throughout, and it's like. It became watch out for Malik Neighbors to Malik Neighbors is wide receiver one. I, I think to start the season, it was more like a lot of people really – like last year he had 1,000 yards. But it was like kind of like a quiet 1,000. Everybody was waiting for Kayshaun. Right, everybody was really more focused on Kayshaun. But then it's like as the season went on, they started to realize like, oh, this, this Neighbors kid is like – a player. Then he had the 200 yards against Mississippi State. And every, that's I think that's when everybody started to realize like this kid is – like this is – this is might be the next great one from LSU, and yeah. then he just kind of just kept going. A hundred yards a game, you can't ignore that. Yeah, because his sophomore year, I think we in this room were like obviously wanted Kayshawn to play well, but the more the season went on, it's like Malik's I, the, number Malik, one. Yeah, you might as well just start four speed and eight because he's the best player on the field for sure. And then he showed that off and his junior could, year. You could feel it. Like yeah. they were there was a I mean it, it, a dedicated. In game, like they were they were getting him the ball every single game. You could feel like the. The, the push for that, and obviously, I mean, put the ball in your best player's hand and win the game. To go from his sophomore campaign against Florida State, where he's face down on the turf, to 4-3-5 and pro day at LSU yeah. is an absolute star turn. Because you didn't really know what you had in Malik, and that's his first game where he felt like he was going to be a difference maker, especially <laughs> yeah. a punt returner. And you see why he was supposed to be back there. Yeah. And then he 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 definitely has some return man juice. Absolutely. And then it became all right. We can't do that to the kid. Like let him focus on wide receiver. And his bounce back has been incredible. Mm-hmm. Like he had the career that he was supposed to have. Peyton, Peyton Kip makes a good point. Steve Smith Senior said Malik Neighbors runs routes like Picasso paints. Oh, he's like he's like a pretty it, high compliment from Steve yeah. Smith. He's like it's almost like he doesn't have enough paint sometimes. Like 
It's like, please give me more. Yeah, there's that only 64 on the color wheel if you're using Crayolas. And he's using them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was there? And then did they have some recruits. It was James Simon there. Did you? James, see James? Simon was there. Wow. Yeah. A, that like that was a big time too. That's a hell of a day to be there. So, I mean, the LSU brand is at an all time high for sure. Remember our friends over at Range Fit. A couple of flavors for you to choose from here over the holiday weekend. If you're looking for the best in hydration, remember our friends over at RangeFit.com is where you can find them. Easy to get in touch with uh, Range Fit and choose over there the hydration that your body deserves. You can uh, remember and see right there on the website. This is a sugar free product, a gluten free product, a dairy free product, a soy free product. Uh, this is uh, water's favorite drinking buddy right now is range fit you can pick it up right now at rangefit.com they have the blueberry acai they have the lemon lime and the strawberry kiwi are the three delicious flavors from you to choose from uh, right now online at rangefit.com you can pick them up and make sure you follow them on social media uh, they are a great spot there we're going to talk to wilson alexander more about the pro day coming up here at 8 a.m this morning chris blair's on the road traveling this Morning with the baseball team as LSU will start the three-game set tonight on the road in Fayetteville versus number one Arkansas. And we're seeing a plan deployed here, uh, a lot like what was used against Paul Skeens last season uh, with the LSU baseball approach here going into this uh, going into this series with Arkansas as they will face the juggernaut tonight. Uh, but they have moved and shook up their staff and decided to throw Luke Holman on what would be the game second two. game of the series and uh, bump back Gage Jump to game three of the series with Arkansas starting Hagen Smith, who is 4-0 on the season, the Hogs ace, uh, who is a buzzsaw. Right now his ERA on the season is .24, 1.24, uh, with 29's innings pinched, uh, innings pitched with 62 strikeouts compared to 10 walks on the season. He's the ace for Arkansas in game one. Ace LSU. of the country. Uh, right. He's, he, <laughs> he is, uh, he's the ace for game one. Uh, LSU has shook their staff up, a lot like what we saw last year, where teams would move their ace against Skeens. Uh, LSU deploys this strategy against Arkansas. What did you think about this? I think this broke on mic'd up, didn't it? Yes, from the mic'd up Twitter account. Yeah. And... Um, Two schools of thought here. If you want to have an optimistic <laughs> spin on this, it's that Luke ooh, Holman would ooh, ooh. would be going on four days rest as opposed to five because Arkansas has the series moved up because of the Easter holiday. So it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You want Holman going on five days rest, so you'll throw him on Friday. That's the optimistic take. Holman through er, like has been moved up before for the Texas series. They moved him up a day so he could throw against Texas. So you could look at it that way, or you could say, let's punt get game two and then try to get game three. And I don't know what you do in game one because I doubt very much that LSU wants to throw Johnny Holstaff in game one and not have your bullpen for game two and game three. So I don't know what you do because if you if you go by that theory of you, you want people pitching on the same day, Thatcher's out the window, so you can't throw him because that would be him coming off a, a day where he pitched on a Sunday again. And it'd be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so you know, it would go like four days rest or three days rest almost. So is that why the move was made when the rest or was that not? That's a like good narrative kind of, uh, to put it if you want to be optimistic. Sure, or it sure. could be they're hiding sure. from Hagen That's Smith. Sure. Don't burn your bullet, your best sure. bullet, because you look at Luke Holman's numbers, they're comparable to what Hagen Smith is doing. It just hasn't been as dominant. If Hagen Smith's on, it's kind of a yeah. see you later. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Holman is Five and one with a point seven eight ERA, Gross. fifty-six strikeouts and thirty-four innings worked with only eight walks. So he is right there. So you give yourself a better chance to win the series by moving him back. And some people would say it's a coward's way out. That's what everybody was saying mm. when LSU had the when the rabbit got the gun, it's a lot more fun to say, Oh, they don't want to face skeins. And why yeah. would you? Right. So let's go let's go try to win game two and game three. Call it what you want. Exactly. <laughs> and so LSU kind of following the same it's easy to paint that narrative of all right, let Hagen Smith take one, burn him, and now you've got now you go one and one with Gage Jump going the third game, and you like your chances. So is there? I mean, obviously there has to be a a, a train of thought here that at some point this offense is going to get going, right? I mean, like this is it's not like they're 
It's not like this is the the line. Right? This is they they've experimented with another. They continue to tinker with new lineups. Paxton Kling on I believe it was Tuesday didn't play, and so they moved Mac Bingham to center. They put Ethan Fry at DH, and they're probably going to try to find him in in right. But they're looking to shake up the lineup because at the the names make sense, but the consistency hasn't been there. You're putting people that are role players in star position positions and star player positions. Like you can't have Milan batting two hole. You know it just didn't work out in the SEC, so you moved him down in the lineup to where he's batting eight or nine, and that works out better for you. So you're trying to find a lineup that works that you can get to Tommy White, and the way that they've been able to do it is. Travinsky is now your everyday catcher. He was your DH, yeah. and now you find him at catcher because you have to have another bat. You put, you move Bingham down the lineup. You put Fry at leadoff, and, and then you've needle. just kind of yeah, you've tried to finagle your way to put as many bodies in front of Tommy White so he can have people on, so you can't walk him. And if you can get to the meat of the order with Tommy Travinsky, Bear Jones, that's when you get. That's when you're scary. But if you do that with nobody on and two out, it's really it's not a threat. Like Bear Jones might leave, he might leave the country in solo home runs. Gotcha. I mean, really? every time he hits one, there's nobody on base, and LSU, yeah. it does it. It's not as consequential as it should be. And so you're trying to find table setters for the LSU offense. He's still tinkering, he being Jay, and so he'll he'll find the right lineup. And I don't think you'll see Paxton Kling at least not tonight. That that seemed to be the best offense that they that Fry led off, and he went 0 for four, but he walked, and at least it was. A, fight, a puncher's on chance, base. yeah. It felt like a little bit more of an intimidating what, factor. What's going on with our boy you kept bringing up at the beginning of your Larson? Was it Larson? Oh, Aiden Larson? Yeah. Ashton he, Larson. Ashton Larson. He, is, he, he played um, again on Tuesday. He has three starts, got back into the lineup. He's somebody that Jay's circling. It's a left-handed bat, so you won't see him tonight against Smith because he's left-handed. But he's somebody that is continually getting playing time, so don't be surprised. He's going to find somebody. Hey, if you want to play center field for LSU, put your hand up. This is what LSU is going to see tonight. It's nasty. God, this was last dude. week against Auburn. They won one to nothing. Auburn's good. One to nothing, and they needed all of this. I mean, this dude has seven. He has seventeen Ks through three innings against uh, Oregon this is his State. First start of the year. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Against Oregon State, seventeen Ks. What? He had like seventeen Ks, and it was like three or four innings. It was something wild. Like it was no, a wild. The, the, fir- the first, uh, I mean, the, the first it, five that, innings. That math, that math it's happened. Math. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. The <laughs> first five innings, he struck out fifteen. So he struck out everybody he faced. Wow. So he had fifteen strikeouts through five. Jeez. All right. Well, I mean, this is it's a good little. Spot to get going. It's that Danny Almonte at the Little League World Series. Like <laughs> this, this guy. Or this is Paul Skeens. Yeah. That, that's people are you know get upset when you compare him to Paul Skeens, especially in this part of the country, but. It's well, not. I mean, it it's not the have, same. That's but it's what the field was like. Yeah, it's just the the dominating presence is there. Where you're like, if it's on, you feel like you really don't have a shot. Mm. And so I don't blame LSU for, especially a very convenient time to be able to do it, to where it doesn't look like a total coward's way out. Like, <laughs> hey, we're trying to throw in five days rest over here. <laughs> yeah, right. We have a process. Hey, so we can. What do you yeah, want? This, <laughs> we're scheduled to throw like this. I don't know what y'all think, <laughs> yeah. but this is the way that it works here. No, I get it. Yeah, get absolutely. It. But we'll see what LSU is able to do. You saw. A resurgence, a little bit of Cam Johnson, who could be Hagen Smith. He throws the exact same throne that they could throw out there. You still have Helmers that's available. They have a couple of names, like, but Ackenhausen went, what, four innings against Florida Saturday? So I, th- those are guys you don't want to burn for now de facto Friday, Saturday, game two and game three. That Ackenhausen has become Riley Cooper. He's the guy that he really trusts the most out the bullpen. Yeah, no, no. Where, and he was ride or die with him against Florida, and he one pitch away from getting a he, series I mean, win. He did. Yeah, he did it. I mean, he got it. And then and then he did it again mm. when you're one pitch away in the and top so of hard. the ninth. And, yeah. <laughs> they asked Ben McDonald, what do you do in that situation when the ball kicks off the catcher? He's like, scream. Running point, yeah. running scream. And it's like. He's like, you can't hear anything. You can't hear shit. Just, Milazzo uh, looked like he lost the his. catchers uh, just. He was like. Oh, yeah. He looked blind. Yeah. I mean, lost my like, keys. It's just balls rolling under his I feet. Mean, it's like, the worst feeling in the world as a catcher off. too. I have no clue where. I know I stopped it. <laughs> like where'd it go? It's close, but it ain't oh, close yeah. enough. What a bad feeling. Mm. Start time tonight, six o'clock on ESPN two. Oh, getting the big that? dogs too. Uh, uh, that. Is that yeah. Bill McDonald? Uh, uh-huh. Is he going? No, he's tonight? in he's in Baltimore. Is he in Baltimore? He just flew to Maryland. Uh, then Didn't we, drive there. I know that. March 29th. 
Uh, easy over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> March 29th, 7 o'clock. That'll be uh, tomorrow's 7 o'clock start. And then on Saturday, it'll be a 2 o'clock start on the SEC Network. Uh, both games 2 and 3 on the SEC Network. Game 3 on SEC Network Plus. So 6 o'clock tonight, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and then 2 o'clock on Saturday. Going to be the start from Bomb Walker Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It sits about 10-7. I'd imagine that every seat in the arena will be filled up over the next three days as the number seven team LSU travels in to uh, face the number one Arkansas team in the country here uh, for, uh, for LSU. So Holman tomorrow night and Gage jump on Saturday uh, for the Tigers. Yeah. As uh, LSU looking to get out of the cellar here, it's a bad time to be looking for a series win. Stu, you're getting fried for your math over there. Sorry. That's <laughs> what happens when you try to math it out loud. Yeah. Yep. And said Ketcher could drop a couple of third strikes, but that'd be a lot of them. It, yeah. Could happen. It, yeah, that's impossible. You could throw a no hitter and still lose. <laughs> you could. It could. It could happen. Base is empty, grand slam. All right, yeah. we're going to talk to Wilson Alexander <laughs> here in 10 minutes, uh, a little over 10 minutes. As uh, we always talk to Wilson, or um, Wilson. what about our guy? Um, do we have Underhill? Nicholas, you should have been taxed. Yeah, let me come right back. We'll have Nick <laughs> Underhill. Draft season. Uh, we'll be right back. Jordy Collada show as always, uh, presented by Gordon McKernan. We'll be right back after this. The NFL reports. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Ochsner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make yep. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. For a hole in your roof, for a hole in your roof. Hey, Greg, roof up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshner's to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of 
you know, access for our community, the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered. Words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225 383-0682 Fourier Agency Get Gordon and get it done. Yeah. Everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done link with Big Four. He got Buku ties for Rari sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm with Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, a champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon. And get it done. Focus on getting deposits, evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it. They said I need the soul searching, I already found it. I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded. Drive by and let it ride like a whip in a Tesla. Pressure never fades me, cause I'm bigger than pressure. I'm on my grind, bullshit, can't fit on my schedule. I'ma do what's best for me, you can keep all your lectures. Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November. Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December. I got it's on the blood like traditional sinners. OGs love me, so I hang with you. Back here, Jordy Collada Show, live here on this Thursday. Nick Underhill, a usual here, New Orleans Football. We're right here on the YouTube channel. Make sure and subscribe, and great time to pick up a uh, subscription to the website, New Orleans Football. Always going into draft season. Uh, Nick, good morning. How are you? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Doing good, buddy. Um, Malik Neighbors put on a show yesterday. What'd you think of the performance? Yeah, I, I mean. It's not saying really anything here. Like, far and away, the most impressive person out there for sure. I mean, the thing I love about him is just the competitiveness. Like, he he, he must have found, like, the one person in the world that thought he was going to run a 4-6, used it to motivate <laughs> himself, comes out and runs it. I was told by by the scouts it was a 4-3-8. So, you know, sometimes you see these times that, that are put out by by the schools, and it's kind of like, man, that's some home cooking. Like, that 4-3-5 wasn't home cooking. Like, it was, it was in that range. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I I think he's extremely impressive. Uh, you know, just kind of just the the strength, the explosion, all that stuff. And I don't know. You know, I I think Marvin will probably end up being the first wide receiver drafted. But I would have serious reservations after going through this process and just seeing how competitive one guy is and how I don't want to say uncompetitive, but he's not out here competing on any of these events. Like, and if you're fast, like a lot of guys want to run the forty to have their time match up against everybody else's and you know just being in that that arena of trying to be better than the next guy and he's not doing it and and i think malik's done everything in the world um you know if i was if i was sitting the draft board i would have serious reservations about who would be my number one guy because i i think he's he's put himself right there and i i just like how he's approached this offseason relative to uh harrison who's just kind of i don't know it's just it's just been like not even doing the medical it's just been it's just been weird uh, did you see the side by side comparisons of the measurables of Jamar Chase and Malik Neighbors? Have you seen that? I didn't. No, it's it's, it's crazy. Let, I mean, just to give you an idea, real quick. And I heard it this morning for the first time, and just was like, "Whoa!" Jamar Chase was six foot two oh one. Malik Neighbors was six foot one ninety nine. Jamar jumped forty one. <clears throat> Malik jumped forty two. Jamar had eleven foot broad jump. Malik had a ten nine broad jump. Jamar ran a four three eight. Malik ran a four three five. Do you think he could be something like that in the league? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he has a chance to be great in the league. No, no doubt about it. I mean, absolutely. And you know, he put up great numbers last year with you know. And I, I, I'm not really saying. I, I think Joe Burrow was a much more accurate quarterback. Sure. So I mean, you know, I, 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 yeah, I think he could go in the league and, and dominate for sure. I would be incredibly excited if if I was running a team and I was able to get him. I think he's a 
he's a game changer for sure. And he, he just, he feels like a sure thing. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of projection that needs to happen here. Like he's going to go into the league. He's going to be an annual thousand yard receiver, probably, you know, much more. And I think he's going to put up great numbers and he's someone, I think you can build your passing offense around 58 throws yesterday for Jaden Daniels. What did he do for his stock? I don't think he did anything to hurt himself. I, I, I don't think he, he changed anything. I think he's he's a top five pick. I think he should be a, a top five pick. Um, I was, you know, just keeping a hundred here. Like, and look, I think he's going to be great. I think there's a lot of things he's going to do great in the league. I'm not trying to cut anyone down, but I was I was mildly surprised by some of the inaccuracies on routes on air that he scripted. Like, it's a little bit surprising when a guy doesn't go, you know, 29 to 30 on these or – on a crossing route, if there's a pass that's a little bit behind someone and there were two that took people to the ground, like I was a little bit surprised to see that, but I don't think it changed his draft stock. I, I think he did everything he was supposed to do. There was easy arm strength um, that that stood out. You know, it just gets down the field in, in such a hurry. And, you know, I think he's going to be really good in the league. I think just with anybody, though, I think you got to get into the right situation and. You know, if it's New England for him, like I would worry a little bit about <laughs> about what they're going to be able to put around him. Um, so I think the biggest concern for him is, is just ending up in the place that that's going to be best for him. But that's for any of the quarterbacks. Like sure. if Drake May ends up in New England, I think the odds are, are stacked, you know, significantly against because they just they don't have anything and they're having trouble recruiting right now. So for him, I think he's just going to be ending up in the, the right spot. But I think he's going to be a great pro. I, I think he he maintained um, that status. And I would probably take him second overall. I mean, if I if I was Washington, he's the guy that I would probably want. Dennis Allen was in the facility yesterday. Is there anybody particular that they may be looking at or a position that that maybe LSU had on display that they were they were interested in? I mean, they need a receiver, and if Brian Thomas you know falls into the second, I think it's something that that could possibly be you know a, a point of consideration. Um, you know, the the center maybe in later rounds they they need help on the offensive line. Um, unfortunately, the Saints need to draft like seven offensive tackles because they have yeah. none. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if LSU was a place for that yesterday, but they're uh, they're in serious trouble there. And yeah, I think I think it, it's should be in consideration at fourteen and forty five because right now they have zero starting offensive tackles. By far the worst tackle situation in the NFL. I think if if Ryan Ramchek can't play and they're telling us they're preparing as if. Uh, He's not gonna, so it's a uh, very, very dire situation right now. Yeah, I was going to ask you. That was my next question. Getting to the Ram check situation that they addressed earlier this week. I mean, first off, how does this happen in a roster management league that that you're looking at a depth chart with no options? Yeah, I mean, your starter. And look, they've known about the the knee issue with Ram check for a while. I think it just kind of accelerated quickly like it, it's it's been known probably for three four years that he had a degenerative issue in there and it was kind of being maintained or whatever and it just kind of really accelerated last year it, it happens though when you you know put all your assets into moving up to get trevor penning and then trevor penning can't even get on the field like that's that's the stuff that that kills them and that that's why they're in this situation right now is because their first round picks just really haven't hit the way they should have like Cesar Ruiz is fine, but I don't, you know, you take a, a guard in the first round, they should probably be a pro bowler. I don't think he's knocking on the door of that. Uh, haven't gotten Peyton Turner on the field at all on the other side, the other line. Um, the Marcus Davenport pick, two first round picks invested into him. He doesn't get a second contract. Trevor Penning's a, a, a miss. Like all these assets, Isaiah Foskey in the second round was hurt last year. Uh, fourth round pick on Nick Saldaveri. Like all these picks they've put into the lines outside of Eric McCoy, like they just aren't getting the return on them. And then you look at it right now and it's like, well, they don't have any pass rushers and they're gambling on Chase Young and they don't have any offensive tackles and now they need to get two. It's just missing. It's just a lot of missed picks on, on those two areas. And look, the door's not closed on Peyton Turner, Foskey or Saldaberry or Penning. But right now, I don't know how you go into the league banking on, on really anything from, from any of them because they just haven't gotten anything from them yet. So it's a, uh, it's it's a tough spot, and those are tough spots to need assets because you can't just like go out and get starters a lot of times at, at the end. Or if you do, you're spending thirty million dollars, and they aren't in the place where where they're where it would even make sense to like go out and get like a Daniel Hunter because the timeline of the team just doesn't match up with his timeline. So they're they're in a tough spot. They got positions of high value that they need to address, and just two picks in the first what four rounds so it, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see how they go about it i would look at probably makai becton like bring him in backstop one of the ot positions draft another and kind of try to go from there but they are boxed in right now of having to get starters and 
really no assets to do it. Ay ay ay. Um, last one, I'll get you out of here. Uh, a couple of rule changes earlier this week, and special teams coach for the Saints, Darren Rizzi, ha- had some input on this, obviously. Um, but the sa- but the NFL changes the rules on the kickoffs, as we explained earlier. Um, wh- what does this mean? Wh- how do you see the game trending and changing here right in front of our face? Yeah, I think it's a drastic change. I, like, if you guys ever watch the XFL yeah. kickoff, it's kind of crazy looking. Yeah, I was trying to get my head around it the other day, and it's, it almost turns it into like an inside zone run. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. it's just kind of you're, you're trying to run the ball up the middle. Um, I, I think it's going to drastically change things. I mean, I think, you know, just kind of look, I mean, I think Washington went last year until like week 16 or 17 before they had to, to defend a kick. Like, so. You could go into these games and be like, yeah, I'm going to carry an extra receiver. And just the way you construct your roster on game day, like with your inactives, like because it's not a real play, like you don't really need a lot of players out there and you can cut corners and, you know, put people out there that probably shouldn't be there and not really have to worry about getting exposed. And I think it's going to change the way they construct game day rosters. Um, You know, the biggest thing is, is that there's two returners back there and it could be kicked to either one. I, I think it kind of changes in the sense that if you're going to have five or six of these returns every game, because if it's a touchback, it goes to the 30. So you're incentivized to actually kick it to somebody. I, I think it kind of changes it to the point where you're putting like actual real players out there to return like marquee guys. Like it would make sense to have, have, you know, a running back back there, uh, Taysom Hill. Like I, I think it changes kind of the setup of everything. Like, I don't know if you can get the ball in like Tyree kills hands five times a game. Like it's something you got to kind of consider a little bit too. Like, so I think it's, it's something that, that, teams are really going to look at i think it's going to change we're going to see a lot more excitement with that but man you watch that thing and it, it's going to take some adjusting that is a weird play to watch those xfl kickoffs it's just kind of like the ball goes and there's just a ton of people moving um but look i know like when i'm covering a game like it's things because like if someone scores a touchdown like i know i can go yeah. take a piss right get some food yeah. come back <laughs> and, four like, to six minutes kickoff's over. Got four to six you minutes know, you, didn't miss, you didn't miss anything and now like <laughs> now you got to be back so 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 it's going to change up uh game day viewing habits for sure too commercial touchback commercial now we're ready that's right <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, our absolutely. guy new orleans football great time for subscriptions as we always tell you going into draft season draft less than a month away malik neighbors Put on a show yesterday. Nick and the crew have a great write-up on it uh, and what that means for the Saints. Nick, LSU is the place for tackles, but next year. Not this yeah, year. that's right. Next year. <laughs> Come feast on tackles. Tight end, too. Yeah. yeah. The, tight end, the tight end looks good, too. He's, he's, he's probably going to be a good draft prospect. Uh, we'll see you, Nicky. Thank you, man. Yeah, take it easy, guys. There yeah, he is, Nick better. Underhill. Uh, checking in at New Orleans, uh, at New Orleans. <laughs> Football. Uh, what was that? We had a we had a little uh, little talk yesterday about about the rap game, and he was asking me about Nick was asking me uh-huh. about if Jay Z dropped an album and if NBA YoungBoy dropped an album, who would move the meter more? Oh, at this point, I don't know if th- would... and Future too. And I was like, Future would probably move the meter more than Jay Z. Like both of them would move the meter more than Jay Z, just because Jay Z's like older. He doesn't drop music. <laughs> I don't as know well, if it's about his age. Yeah, yeah, I think Jay Z's. Uh, he's... I mean, it's about an age in a different. He's way. on the way to the perp walk. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah, of other drop things. One on. more, I or think the it would go nuclear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get on that plane. I think P Diddy's back. I think he flew back into Florida. Did he? Did he ever leave? Yeah, he went. To, well, uh, from what I heard, he put his name on the manifest and wasn't on the plane. Yeah, yeah. no, I think Diddy's he's. He's camping Hiding out somewhere. Tight. He's playing a wild game. Yeah, right. He's been he's playing got, a wild he's game. He's got Lloyd's cousin with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick with a, a shot across the bow. We don't talk about family business in this show. <laughs> uh, all right, we will uh, talk Matter to our guy, Wilson Alexander, <laughs> next here. Get more on this uh, NFL Pro Day. Uh, less on the Diddy situation. Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> We're back. Allegedly. Diddy. We're back with more. <laughs> Uh, I'm not even going to give a sponsor <laughs> shout out here. We'll be back with more. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. New Orleans South Football. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Rusa. Rusa. Hold on. Rusa. 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 Hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. 
At Ochsner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for Dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation of them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordy Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Family calls family. That saying resonates even more as your family grows. And we can't seem to stop growing. Meet the newest member of the Get Gordon family, Penny's cousin, Rosie. Rosie already knows, the larger your family, the more people you have to lift you up during trying times. Just like at Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys, we've grown to over 200 team members with over 50 local attorneys. So whether you pick Penny, employ Ellie, roll with Rosie, or Get Gordon, we want to be your lawyers for life. Your lawyers for life. Phil's Oyster Bar, a staple of South Louisiana since 1945, located in South Downs Shopping Center and online at philsoysterbar.com. If you log online, you can learn about the private party schedule, the catering menu, and even order online. Daily lunch specials Monday through Friday. Learn about the history when Gus Piazza took it over in the early 70s, made it an absolute stop in for everyone who came through Baton Rouge, and now Anthony, his son, carrying on the tradition. Phil's Oyster Bar, South Down Shopping Center, and online, philsoysterbar.com. Thank you for enough, and they starting to flip. Circumstances start to change, and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter who's tied to your hip. They try to push it to the side. All right, welcome back here. Jordy Colada Show live here on this Thursday. Closing out the week. Remember daily, we're brought to you by Katie's Restaurant. Katie's down in New Orleans. Check them out on Niverville Street. Online at katiesinmidcity.com. Great spot to post up and watch the games this weekend. March Madness gets back underway. Ladies in action tomorrow or Saturday at noon from Albany. They'll be taking on UCLA for a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get there, uh, check out Katie's Restaurant in New Orleans on Everville Street. Katie'sinmidcity.com. Wilson Alexander's regularly with us on Tuesdays. It was a busy week. For Wilson as he had practice access on Tuesday morning and then yesterday he was back at LSU on campus for Pro Day. Uh, so we uh, we moved the segment to Thursday which we appreciate very much for him working with us and uh, wanting to get the information out because this is a segment that our uh, our listening audience very much looks forward to. So good to see you this morning uh, Wilson. Uh, how are Whoa! The master's oh. back. <laughs> Hello, friends. Oh, the right, hair looks like a cockatoo this morning. Are you? Uh, <laughs> uh, is, is, is this to, a, had to do it. Is this a trip in the making? Are you? Have you been there? Are you? Um, you going? Oh man! Well, I wish I could manifest that or something. Yes. But uh, like coming up, I have been to the Masters once. I got to cover it my senior year Oof. of college for the whole week. But okay, so I got food poisoning oh. going into Sunday, so I missed Sunday's round. However. <laughs> It was the year that Patrick Reed won. So oh, year. perfect, <laughs> perfect. Too many was pimento the, cheese. Well, yeah, I, was, I was about to say, was it the pimento cheese? Don't say anything no, bad about the Masters. Actually, never do me that wrong. Yeah, no, yeah never do me that wrong. It was something else. It was uh, the Hooters across the street. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Malik Neighbors. It was probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're watching. They're watching. Let's just move They're on. everywhere. Um, Malik Neighbors yesterday, Wilson. How do you sum up what you saw? He, put, he, he performed extremely well. I mean, this is a guy who was so eager to go out and perform, uh, and especially with the 40-yard dash. He said he woke up at 5 a.m., not that his alarm was set then, but just that he was anticipating the 40 in particular. His leg was or even like shaking a little bit because he just really wanted to get out there. They didn't have to be there until 8, but he woke up at 5. And he ended up, you know, the, all the work that he had put in toward that really ended up paying off. I mean, you just saw Malik's athleticism. You saw his speed. You saw the things that make him so explosive, uh, the 42-inch vertical, the 10-foot, 9-inch broad jump, uh, and obviously the 4.3540 all backs up just what he's able to do when he gets the ball in his hands in particular and what he's able to do before that in terms of creating separation within his routes in order to get open for quarterbacks. Uh, this is a guy who was already going to be a top-10 pick, absolutely, and now it seems like it maybe solidified his status as somebody who ought to be in the top six. I mean, you're even seeing comments from, you know, I think pretty respected NFL draft analyst types um, who are saying, you know, this is a guy who certainly on some teams board is the number one wide receiver ahead of Marvin Harrison. And even on some teams board, maybe just the top overall draft prospect uh, in the whole class. I mean, he's very highly regarded already, and he solidified that with what he did at Pro Day. Uh, what did you see from Jaden Daniels and what happened to his stock on Wednesday? Yeah, I don't think it, his stock was really affected one way or another. I mean, it's hard to say for sure because there's you know so much um, you know secrecy going on from basically two through I guess four or five um, with what teams want to do in terms of moving up and drafting quarterbacks and and all that all those sorts of things. Um, you know, when you I'm not necessarily plugged into like the NFL landscape quite like sure. on this level, but like you know, Caleb Williams seems like he's going to be the number one pick. Uh, based on what a lot of folks are saying, and that Jaden is still in contention for number two to the Commanders. We saw, um, you know, basically every quarterback needy team at the top of the draft was there, and, like, a lot of their offensive coaching staff was there, as well as their head coaches and GMs. Like, there was teams coming down there to look at Jaden in particular. Dan Quinn, the Commanders coach, was standing right behind him when he was throwing. Uh, Josh McCown, the Vikings uh, quarterback coach, who they seemed to be in the market for a quarterback, was standing right behind him. Uh, a ton of them there, and their senior offensive assistant, Ben McAdoo, was standing right behind them. Like, uh, a lot of those teams were there. Antonio Pierce, the Vikings, the Raiders coach, was there. Uh, and, you know, there was just a lot of interest on Jaden. And, you know, did he have a perfect day? No, he missed a few throws. He had some overthrows. Um, but, it, but I think still overall it seemed like he didn't do anything to necessarily hurt his stock. I mean, what are you going to put more into pro day than you are into the tape that you saw over his career? Probably not. Um, as an NFL evaluator, unless it was just like absolutely horrid, and it wasn't. Um, so, you know, it's still going to come down to just what a team necessarily wants at two or three. And, um, you know, Drake May's pro day is today. And um, obviously, over the next month, the NFL draft, some opinions may change here and there as teams try to figure out what they want to do. But I still see Jaden as a top three pick. Uh, Brian Thomas seems to be a hot name over the last month since the NFL Combine. Uh, he was out there running routes yesterday. What was the buzz on Thomas? Yeah, obviously it wasn't as buzzy of a day for Brian as it was for Malik because he didn't do all of the tests. But he's still somebody who it, it was so clear to see his uh, route running and his ability as a downfield receiver. Uh, there was one play that caught the eye of a bunch of evaluators where it was kind of late, I think, in Jaden's throwing session. Uh, he just reached out, fingertip grab down the right sideline on a vertical route, and <laughs> it, um, it 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 made it was it was impressive. You know, it's something that you know kind of maybe goes unnoticed a little bit in the midst of pro day, but um, being able to kind of catch up to that ball and haul it in with his fingertips like that was uh, just continued to to impress teams. And, and he's done this whole season. He's done that throughout this pre-draft process already. And you know, someone asked him, he's like, "Oh, why didn't you test it?" He's like. I stood on my numbers at the combine. I did all of them at the combine. <laughs> um, he, and it was like, uh, yeah, because he was fantastic at the combine. He ran a four three three, and so there was, there was no need for him. To, um, or was it four three four? I think it was four three three. But anyway, either way, thank you. All right, I had it right the first time. Um, and uh, I mean, when you already have done that, and you had the season you did last year, he's going to be in that top fifteen range. Um, we'll see if he can get up as high as, uh, you know, 12 or, you know, but anywhere from, it sounds like from that 12 to 18 uh, range is going to be where he lands. And um, I think a team's going to be very happy with him. 
Um, other names yesterday, for sure, and I know it's easy to get kind of lost in the sauce with the LSU flavor this this draft season because of how many high end prospects and and how popular they'll be on you know opening night uh, of of this year's draft, but. The other players here that, that stand to make a push here and, and seem like their name um, garnered some interest yesterday were guys like Andre Sam um, and, and then um, also Mason Smith and Makai Wingo. What, what were some other buzz, standouts, names that, that kind of got going yesterday that you saw from Pro Day? Certainly those defensive linemen. It seemed like teams in the, in the market for a defensive linemen were also interested in coming down for Pro Day when you had that group of Jordan Jefferson, Makai Wingo, and Mason Smith. Makai, you just saw his athleticism, uh, really in particular, with these recone shuttle. Um, I mean, you could see it in some of his combine numbers, like the 10-yard split on the 40 and some different things like that that show his um, how agile he is and how just quick his get-off is. Uh, and that was evident again yesterday. He, I mean, the way he was able to get downfield in, you know, within that sort of 10-yard range it is so fast, and it, it, we, could, we could see it all, you know, watching him when he was healthy last year, and that, especially in that first half against Florida State. We didn't see it the whole season, but um, I think over the last two years, you could really tell that that get-off is impressive. Um, and, you know, he doesn't have the size of Mason Smith, but he has a lot of other attributes that have made him such an effective defensive tackle, and somebody who is definitely going to be drafted this year just kind of depends on where. Um, he uh, continued to sort of make that obvious uh, with his pro day. Jordan Jefferson similarly he's had a, you know, was at the Senior Bowl, had a good year at LSU last year, um, had it on tape from West Virginia, and now after pro day yesterday, it seemed like he stood up to some teams as well. And there continues to be intrigue in Mason Smith. I mean, you know, he didn't have the season he did, uh, you know, certainly anyone necessarily expected of him last year. Um, he thought that he played a little bit better down the stretch. Um, than maybe anybody like uh, outsiders did, um, and obviously ended up going in and then go ahead and declaring. Um, and because of his size and his athletic ability, he remains an intriguing prospect for teams. It's going to be fascinating to see where he ends up too. Uh, and then Wilson, yesterday is 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 a good day to almost show the program off, recruit, have guys. I mean, you saw Harold Perkins interacting with the Raiders. You saw James Simon, the future recruit, on campus kind of taking it all in. Obviously, you had every NFL team represented. Brian Kelly had a press conference. What have you seen Pro Day kind of grow into? I mean, Jock and I were talking yesterday. I mean, I remember going in the weight room and watching them, you know, do the, you know cramming everybody in there and doing the bench press. This is, you know, much like the NFL now, you know, a, a big display. LSU had over 125 credentialed media members um, I think maybe even closer to the 150 range. There were, uh, as we said, 32 representatives from NFL teams, and that's typically the case uh, at LSU's pro day. But you sh- that's not always like the big time coaches that you see on the sideline. You know, it's a lot of scouts and evaluators of that nature. But we're talking about six head coaches, six GMs, a whole bunch of receivers coaches, offensive coordinators, uh, defensive line coaches, like people who are you know have name recognition within the NFL. We're at LSU yesterday because of the talent that they uh, brought out in this draft class, so particularly at the top with you know Jaden Malik and Brian Thomas, but also like we said, some of the defensive linemen. And you know maybe there's some teams who are going to be interested in like Andre Sam and Omar Spates, who ended up throwing yeah. like 30 reps up on the bench press. You know didn't have a great year at LSU last year, um, but had a solid pro day. And you know uh, that, that that's, does not that does nothing to hurt your program. It, it was a, quite the spectacle, just the number of people who were there, the amount of interest that was on LSU. I mean, this thing was getting broadcast, you know, on multiple stations. I know SEC Network, but, you know, they did like a rewind on, uh, what was it, I think NFL Network and uh, NFL Network was hosting too. And like there, there was just so much uh, attention on LSU's Pro Day yesterday. Um, that certainly helps in recruiting. That helps in, in everything. I mean, especially, you know, compared to last year. I mean, like there was, they also didn't have the same type of draft prospects last year. B.J. Ojolari, who ended up being a, a second round pick, um, was kind of like the the biggest name uh, coming out, and you know this year is just a lot different. It helps, you know. We say it would have been nice, you know, when we're talking about this to see how this would have compared to 2019. We didn't get a 2019, like I'm talking about 2020 draft from that 2019 team. They didn't get a pro day because it was canceled during the pandemic. Um, but it, it would have imagined it would have been interesting to see how this would have rivaled that with the number of first round picks that that team had, the number of draft prospects that team had, but. Um, you know, this has certainly been 
uh, a pro day that has helped LSU out in a lot of ways. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt you. Uh, is it going to help you t- immensely long term? Um, you know, who's to say they got to keep building on that? Um, but it doesn't hurt when you can cont- when you can sort of p- add this to the recruiting pitch. You had a chance to see the team work out on Tuesday, and you also had a chance to see them extended work out on Saturday. Um, anything jump out worth of note here? I think the main thing for me was Major Burns playing the star position uh, mm-hmm. from that practice on Saturday. You know, we had, hadn't quite seen like the full defense do much of anything yet in the very limited windows that we'd had to watch practice. Mm-hmm. Um, that star position changes I think, a lot of things for Major. It brings him down to the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, sometimes out in this like kind of a, a nickel player, um, but a lot in a lot of scenarios he'll be kind of around the box, and that's extremely different from what we saw Major Burns doing the last couple of seasons as a deep safety. And with him in that role, now you've got Sage Ryan at that natural safety spot for him, which is something that he's just a little bit more used to doing. Um, you know, not playing the nickel or the corner anymore, um, but back at safety, uh, it seems like maybe it's helping him out because he had those three interceptions and um, he's read the ball really well in one of them and, you know, was able to make some good plays on the others. And uh, that, that seems, I think, maybe the thing that said most was uh, how this, this Tunnel is sort of uh, with them particularly in the secondary. Uh, Wilson, uh, obviously from a uh, player standpoint, the uh, spring gives them a good t- op- uh, chance to evaluate. One position that doesn't need any evaluation is the tackle spot. Um, w- what do you see this this season with Emory Jones and Will Campbell kind of growing into with these guys? I'd imagine there was a lot of attention on them yesterday as well. Yeah, I think both of them were out there yesterday uh, watching this. I know I saw Will. Will uh, I think I saw Emory, too. I mean, there's a reason that LSU's run game, Brian, whenever Brian Kelly keeps talking about the changes, he keeps highlighting what, why it's because of the offensive line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. because of guys like Will Campbell and Emory Jones. I mean, their athleticism, um, they want to be able to pull and, and get out on the edge. Uh, these are, you know, big people who want to be able that they're fast enough and athletic enough to get out there. And we well as working on something that they did uh, the last couple of years. Um, they were working on wide receiver bubble screens. Not something they did, but it gets the offensive tackles out on the edge. And that's not something that's incorporated into this offense. That, this, that's real strength of this team. Especially, you know, these guys who've started since they were freshmen, now going into their junior years. They've got a ton of experience. They're really well developed. And now that's a, because they are so far along in who they are as players, LSU can truly highlight them and really build the offense on t- off of the offensive line and and Will and Emory as those bookend tackles in particular in some ways. And so, you know, they, they're, they're probably going to have a great season. And when we're talking about the NFL draft here, those are going to be two guys who have teams that have interest in as well. Uh, Wilson, great information as always. We're kind of surfing through the internet matrix with you right now uh, as we're bouncing around a little bit. But we hear the information as always. It is solid, and uh, we look forward to talking to you next week. Sounds good, y'all. Have a happy Easter. Sorry about those connectivity issues. All good, buddy. Thank you, sir. Um, there he is, Wilson Alexander. Wilson. It's not going to help. The- is that a Stevie Corinne Bell? Under the post. Under the like, who's the the handle? Like, I'm I'm looking at like trying under the post. Jordan Reed still. Brian Thomas Jr. Had no, no, a catch no. Under a under post. Oh, oh, Under Stevie the knows, that's Stevie knows ball. Uh, What'd you say? Stevie Corin Bell. That's close. Oh, okay. yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I respect I'm not, I'm not old yet, right? <laughs> old <enough. laughs> like, but I mean, I'm aging. <laughs> I'm aging for See, sure. That makes me feel good. I could read the the quote tweet of the of the post. Oh, so wow. I feel good about God that. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good, Lord. Thank you, sir. 2020. I used, still... I used to have James Bond like eyes. I thought I felt like I could read the, the play sheet from from, from the press box. <laughs> yeah. I know what they're calling. Yeah, right. He's going I write. Peyton just called play 61. <laughs> yeah, he's highlighting it. What happened? How does that happen? It's I guess just... there's nothing you can do about it. I no. guess you get LASIK. What, like going on, like not being able to see? I yeah. blame a lot of it on the smartphone. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot that. of it's. I guess a lot of it. Does your dad wear glasses? Do your parents wear glasses? He wears the readers. Uh, that's that's where it comes uh, from. It's usually I, a hereditary <laughs> thing. It's, yeah, not, right. it's not normally like, right. oh, I've been looking at this phone well, for ten I, plus years. I was just wonder if you can like do eye strengthening exercises. You know, you can strengthen your jaw. I don't know if you could ever can like get better at hearing that or is, seeing. That is crazy that you can't like 
strengthen your eyes. Like if you did the without re- surgery. Dude. Yeah. That's that's a myth. That's a lie. What I say? ate carrots as a kid and I'm blind as a bat. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you're eighteen, dog. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, I mean you're eighteen, eighteen. <laughs> Fresh out the box. But I guess if you did <laughs> right. like the reading, literally, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but if you did like the reading test every day, like at, that you do for, are you talking about the letters? Yeah, if you did that every Woo! day, would your vision get better? Or number like, one question. The same? Number one. That's a good question. Two. Yeah, that's a question. We should resource our Southern Eye Center. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah. yeah. <laughs> go there and put what good today. reason to go in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we went. A couple in. of questions came up on the show. <laughs> yeah, figured we do some field research. Right. Some I mean, we went in there. Jordy got a full eye exam. Yeah. Like she's like. Yeah. Right. Taking pictures of Jordy's eyes. Yeah, she. I had the gel in. Like I went. Like oh, she in dil- the clouds. She dilated your eyes. I went in the fog. Like could not see. see yeah, we got to drop back all. out of here. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> needs a ride. Yeah. Needs a ride. Eye doctor sunglasses. Oh to go yeah. Home. The uh, the wraparound. <laughs> yeah. See, I did. I got my eyes dilated once before a baseball practice, and I went back, and they thought I went and like crushed twelve beers and came back to practice. And I was like, I didn't tell anybody, and I was swinging, and missing by fifteen feet. And they're like, "Are you drunk?" And I was like, I "Got my eyes dilated." Like, get the fuck out of here! Go like, home. Why would you come? I, like, I just wanted to see what it would be like. <laughs> I literally can't see. I can't see. <laughs> and I had no clue. I was that far off. I was like, "Damn, this really makes a difference." Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess the it's it's starting. Starts trending. Yeah, I mean, I had gray hair in high school. Damn, you stressful life. A little bit old Park soul on the fifty. Old soul for sure. But I mean, I think the gray turns a little. I've been getting a couple charcoaly early. I got a yeah, salt early. and pepper. Yeah. Have you gone to the big text on the phone yet? Oh. I have not. Oh. That's the real life when, yeah. demarcation. When I, when I do see that, I do <laughs> say to myself, <laughs> Ooh, that "That's an nice. old habit." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, that's, get, might as well that get a gym screams, <laughs> old man. Like, old. That screams AARP. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, have you gotten your world done up yet? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> There's, yeah, when you see people go through the text and it's like a normal paragraph and they're scrolling and they're like not, they have yeah. to read it too, so that you're like, Whoa, I can't bro. even live like yeah, that. Bro. Like, like, that's the tuck, world I don't want to be. That away, <laughs> yeah. like, I read all that. You have your social security number on that thing. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, or, not. or not. Like, you might as well just write me a letter. Right. A handwritten. <laughs> or right. send a bird messenger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine them having to go through, first of all, if you need that, and then finding the way to do it. It had to be a, just an entire Oof. day of, I can't read this. Now I'm trying to read to wow. make it bigger, but I can't because I can't is see. Is this as big as it goes? Yeah. Make my text bigger on my <laughs> Wait, phone, let me, see, let me see how big. I mean, it's, it's a letter per screen at this, at this yeah. rate, Pops. <laughs> are you <laughs> going right. to the mall later? <laughs> Where are you? you uh, the, just then, call me. And then the space, space, question mark, space. You're like, Oof. oh, no. Golly. With the pronunci- you know, like with the pronunciation, yeah, <laughs> like two spaces and a question mark. You're like, oh, just go to talk to text. Is, oh, geez. This is a lost How big does it get? Yeah. Show it. Well, it. I can't. That's see not that. bad. He can't. You can't see that. For I real? couldn't see that if you had a gun to my head. Right no, now. I wow. couldn't see that either. That's but not, like I mean, the, the text offered, gets big. If you offered me a million bucks to read that right now, see I, that's how I'd far fail. Stewie is away from this. He's doing it in his notes app. I'm talking about like no, text messages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, talking I'm about going the to the messages. Font. I gotta find. A... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know how to do it. So we're you're stuck there forever. Yeah, I am. And the Mannings will take your phone and put it in Chinese and give it back to you. So whenever Oof. you try to unlock it, it's all in Chinese. Ooh. <laughs> Which is diabolical. Wait, who did that? The Mannings do it to like their buddies <laughs> they, all the time. To each other? Probably. Yeah, like to like anybody. They put it to like interviewers. I was about to say, I could see Eli <laughs> doing that to Peyton. For sure. Be like, what the uh, God? Oh, because once you open is. your phone up again, it's in Chinese. So like you're you're stuck. <laughs> Like you have to have muscle memory. You better have like, Face that's ID. That's a great yeah. one. <laughs> that is a great. That app. is a great. Well, good thing your fo- like phones have Face ID. Yeah, if but even did- then, like now you're just in a phone that you're, all your texts are in Chinese, <laughs> all of the notifications are in Chinese, like the settings are in Chinese. Oh, shit. So like wow. the whole thing, and they're like, we'll you see. couldn't leave your phone around the Manning for Let's like see a couple of I months, switch. where they thought it was the funniest thing ever. That's a classic. It is, but it's so. It, it's, but it's kind of a you know it's like borderline diabolical. Yeah, yeah, right for sure, Language. for sure. Let's see. I mean, I'm reading a. Um, Jeez. I just finished a book. Oh. And it is. It is well, uh, you didn't read it. I know that. Right, right I didn't read it. <laughs> you can't I'll, see that. I listened to it. <laughs> the text is too small. <laughs> I listened to it. Uh, big book listener. Yeah. Big book listener. 
Uh, which, BBL. Which, which I am. Yeah, BBL. <laughs> <laughs> Love <laughs> BBL. <laughs> um, Hashtag BBL in the and chat. And the name of this book. All right. Oh, chill out. <laughs> chill out. Chill out. <laughs> it's, it's reading. Yeah, right. Siri, not now. Uh, Hollywood Hellraisers. The Life, Wild Lives, and Fast Times of Marlon Brando, Dennis Hopper, Warren Beatty, and Jack Nicholson. And Warren Beatty. <laughs> I mean, or excuse me, uh, Marlon Brando was an animal. I mean, like <laughs> this guy. But his favorite holiday, well, him and Jack Nicholson shared a driveway. Mm. Like God, a house what a time. on Mulholland Drive. And Nicholson said that his favorite holiday by far was April Fool's. Wow. <laughs> and that some of the April Fool's that he pulled off, like, would have people, like, nearly divorced. Yeah. <laughs> Like, had people, like, quitting their job. Oh, like, had people, like, doing things where he would just, like, diabolical shit. You yeah. Know, like, where, like, where, like, you just, he was the only one that could get away with it. Yeah. You know, like, where. <laughs> Not even the suspect I mean, on the list. people would be like, Marlon, I need you to go save my marriage now. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> you know what happens? Like, oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> God damn it. But, I mean, like, just, like, some of the most evil. But it's a, it is a phenomenal book of just a different time, man. A different time and, and era of what that world was built serious. on. Yeah, I, I don't really like April Fool. It's not a no. I don't either. I'm not I don't not either. Fond of it. I don't either at all. But I'm it, too much of a one. suspect, so I yeah. can't do anything. But April yeah, Fool. It's a, a great a idea suspect. of a holiday. I have, it is. I have one of Brando's that he did for The Godfather. <laughs> Uh, because this is from uh, his autobiography, Brando's Songs My Mother Taught Me. I had a lot of laughs making The Godfather. Mafioso were always dropping in to watch us, mm-hmm. and there were a lot of playful hijinks, which mm-hmm. I, which is how somebody that would do a prank right. would phrase it. Right. Uh, in a scene in which the Godfather, the Godfather's family brings him home from the hospital after a failed assassination attempt, they must carry him up a flight of stairs on a stretcher, and before he did the shot, I told the cameraman to give me 300 pounds of lead weights. Uh, then I hid them under my blankets, which made the stretcher weigh over 500 pounds. But nobody knew this but the cameraman and me. My family started to carry me up the stairs, but they couldn't make it. They were strong. But before long, they were ringing with sweat, huffing and puffing, and unable to get up the stairs. I said, come on, you weaklings. I'm going to fall off this thing if you don't get me up there. This is ridiculous. The camera operator nearly fell off the stool laughing while Francis barked at the foreman to hurry up. One of them kept muttering, what the hell's going on? How can this guy weigh so much? After five or six takes, I raised the blanket and showed them the weights. <laughs> I mean, classic stuff, dude. Five takes. The of stories that. of like the movie sets, like The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, and some of the just movie sets, stuff that happens on the set. You know, what I mean, it's oh, like with, 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 quite on the set with a guy like Marlon Not Brando. That. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that that stuff has always been around Hollywood. Just kind of like looking at the culture and seeing it now, like being exposed. But this book really is kind of like the, you know, like these dudes were some, I mean, they were some players. I mean, they were some, but not in this. I mean, they were some players like that, but some players in like revolutionary in, in the way that films were made. I mean, Dennis Hopper, you don't think about it, but I mean, was like a standout director. You know, like he was like the one that has the responsibility of directing Easy Rider. And I remember the first time I saw Easy Rider was the first time I ever like kind of really respected a movie and how it was made because there's a lot of New Orleans in it. That's mm-hmm. what kind of hooked me. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I was around the age where that type of that type of stuff was fun, cool, hip. So, you know, it's like I, I was so interested in it and to think that they were in that and then read this book. It was just is a different time and i mean you know warren Beatty, the the life he led by i mean my god i mean uh how that dude has any genitalia still connected to his body <laughs> is a study in science because he used it dipped it in everything that is breathing it seems like uh and jack nicholson just is an american classic i mean he is by definition i think an American classic. The dude did not find out that the the person he thought was his mother his entire life was in fact his sister. And his mother was like this figure to him that he looked at and considered like this this failure and but Wait, say that again? The 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 person that he thought was his sister 
his entire life was his mother turned out to be his mother. Did I say it wrong the first time? No, he, I no, just switched. Did. I think he did. You switched. You just switched it. But the the person that he thought was his sister mm -hmm. was his mom. Turned out to be his mother. Uh, she didn't say anything. No, and didn't say it on her deathbed. He didn't find it out until Time Magazine did a study on it and brought him the information. And he called like this trusted person in his life and. She told him the, the truth, and he didn't find out. He was thirty-eight. What's the what's the rub? Ah, uh, it, it was it was a young. She was young, like she died at forty-four, you know, and he didn't find out until like five or six years, ten years later. It, it was it was she was a young, like her family covered it, like was like this is the better way to go about right, this. Like we'll yeah, play the parents, of, yeah, you play of, the sister. Will raise step de facto the same thing. It's uh, it, yeah. it's a it's a wild past and would you and be a mad? Life. How, what year was he born? I wouldn't even be mad if that that it, came it, to be. I guess it was like around the forties because Nichols. he was like coming into Nicholson? he was coming into Hollywood like in the sixties. This is Jack right? Nicholson, right? Nicholson. Yeah, he's born in nineteen thirty-seven. Okay, so like I mean, 37. that's the tale of the times, right? You know, Having I mean, like he young, was he was in Hollywood for a decade. Before he realized, like, like I mean, like he's got a famous quote to a, or no, he tells Marlon Brando, he's like, uh, like a famous quote, he's like, I, I think I'm gonna be a movie star. Huh. He was like, I, I came here to be like a, a writer, a director, you know. And he was like, I just, I, I would Guess write an roles actor. and I would play in it, and people would fall in love with his role in the way that, like, you could love him and laugh at him, but you could also hate him and laugh at him was, like, the draw to him early on. And now that he is who he is, you see, like... That's just who he that's is. That's who he is. Yeah, like, worked it, these parts for me. I mean, like, he's just Jack Nicholson. Yeah. In yep. all those roles, he's just kind of like Jack Nicholson. That's uh, a great book. I, I, mean, I would advise it. It's a, it's, if you're looking for a good, just kind of uh, listen during downtime, I would listen in the shower, listen while I'm in the car, listen, you know, just kind of when I had time. But I couldn't... There was a time where I just couldn't put it down. The Brando stories are incredible. The Marlon Brando stuff. I mean, that guy, the time he lived in, right? Like, I mean, he was a movie star in the late 40s through the 2000 he did his last movie. I mean, and I'm talking about like an alpha movie star. You know, like the one that everybody wanted to work yeah, with and meet. I don't, I don't do... Right, um, exactly. Yeah, this is casting. I'm not and like some of the a... stuff like he would do, like you know, like some of those stories, like like you're gonna have to work with Brando, and like he's not gonna do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you know, he's just not. He's yeah, not, he's not gonna deal with that. It's the entourage effect, you exactly. know. When it's like you get to a point where like I don't do interviews for this. Oh, like right. I'm either got the part I mean, or I don't. Right. <laughs> There's no casting call for me. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic book. E, did Check you it read it? <laughs> yeah, right. Did you at least read it, E? Turns out that guy's a scumbag. <laughs> oh, like the real actor. Yeah, Kevin Colony turns out to be Damn. an awful person. Really? Yeah, he's been, his podcast network, like, he didn't pay anybody for, what? like, over years of work. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, so it's been all been aired out by Jersey Jerry, of all people, who mm -hmm. worked for him and did, like, content for, like, a year and never saw a dollar. <laughs> Wait, is this the same Jersey Jerry that yes. does the yes. live stream? Yes. My guy. And then it came out that um, Matt Stafford's wife did a, a podcast for him, and she never got paid. Uh, and, Fred Stafford. And so it just all this litany of people, and he's just like not talking about it. Wow. So damn. damn. Wouldn't think so. He's uh, That's more surprising. He's yeah. a terrible person. Yeah. He's not the E that you think. Kevin Connolly. Uh, remember, Go Roof brings you our show every day online at geaux roof dot com. Go Roof, of course. Proud partners over here. You can find Go Roof online at geauxroof.com uh, roof and 225 927 8300 is the phone number if you want to get them uh, and get in touch with Go Roof. A beautiful roof every single time. Check out our friends over at Go Roof as you can find them for residential or commercial roof. And don't forget about Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Uh, speaking, if you get that house and the roof put on it, you need the plumbing taken care of. Get in touch with our friends over at Barker Brothers. Barker Brothers located in Plaquemine. Easy to find them as well. They got two couple of trucks working here in East Baton Rouge play, uh, Parish. Uh, love Jude Barker and his crew, Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Uh, man, going back to the, a little bit of the conversation with Nick Underhill. Saints are in. Oh my goodness! Like so much trouble. What? Like deep, deep trouble. I mean, you say out loud as an NFL football team that you don't have any tackles in April. Not one. Ramchek's hurt. Doesn't look like. I mean, he looks like he's a. A lemon at this point, and I don't mean that 
disrespectively, but I mean, the NFL kind of, that, that is the NFL. It's kind of an assembly line of your body, right? I mean, you, you, you come in fresh and you just wear it down. And once it's unusable, you just kind of throw it away. I mean, it that's gets traded for parts. Yeah. I mean, and you don't, nobody wants it. And not to cut you off, but I thought the most interesting thing was Michael Thomas off the top rope, where he was like, this isn't a player problem. It's a. This is a, it a, seems a team like, problem. Yeah, it seems to be like a staff problem with what's going on with the, the medical side of the Saints. And, I mean, you saw what happened with Michael Thomas. Now you see Ryan Ramchek. And for a player to come out and openly call out, uh, I guess, a team now he formerly was employed by, just, and when you start putting the pieces together, I guess that's, I don't know how you fix that. Like, uh, how do you bring in a new medical anything? Yeah, the, the, the medical line between the Saints and his staff seems broken, fractured. I mean, for sure. Um, I don't, I mean, but just the situation that they're in yeah. from a salary cap standpoint, from a personnel standpoint, from now you're looking at the roster management and how mismanaged it is. I don't care what's hurt, who's hurt, who's not playing. You don't have a tackle accessible going into like mini camp season. And I agree with Underhill, like you, you might have to spend multiple picks on the same position. But, I mean, like, they have needs everywhere. Yeah. But, I mean, not going I, – I guess, you know, like, I'm not a big fan of Derek Carr. I'll never be a fan of David, Derek, Dave, Dave, both. Dave he, Rick, and <laughs> Dave Rick is who we'll call it. He should, Derek. Um, <laughs> Dave Rick. But, I mean, Dave dropping Rick. him back behind this offensive cool. line – you better pay him $150 million. And he holds the ball forever. And he loves to bitch about it. I mean, he is going to get slaughtered. Got to get the, got to get those things cleaned there. up. They, they have <laughs> the so, Saints. The Saints are but, like, they, are in a, they, but, they feel like they're number one pick worthy for the next decade. Yeah, but uh, on Pro Football Focus, you could do like mock drafts for like each team. Whatever team you want, you pick it. You could pick, you get their pick and you get all their picks and you get to pick. That's how mock drafts work. Right. Whatever. So somebody on Twitter picked every every used all the Saints picks to pick that. a tackle. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like Hey, swing. You swing might have the like this might actually be what they have to do. At least half of those picks might have to go towards like offensive line help. The first two probably will. And yeah. they have I'm looking at Bucky Brooks uh mock draft and they have him taking JC Latham, which I think would be a good pick mm. if he falls to you there. I was but about to say I don't even know if Latham's gonna be able to I don't know if he'll be point. there, but that's where the Saints are right now. I was listening to somebody on the radio. I think it was Hunt that was saying like, if they're able, and he was trying to be optimistic about the Saints. Like, if you get however many draft picks you have this year, it's like if you can find four starters. Like, do you know how hard that is to find four starters in a rookie draft class? Like, that's not the way that nature intended you to build I your roster. I think the last time the Saints did that was what the twenty seventeen draft. And was, uh, Ramcheck, Kamara, Lattimore, Lattimore, Lattimore. Yeah. That's three. Ramcheck. But it was it was a fourth in that. It was group. a fourth. Was, it was a DB. It might have been a safety. Regardless, that's that's an historic draft class when you look at it. Not only from like through the Saints lens, but in the last probably ten years of people drafting, and they look at that draft as like, wow, you found three pole, like Pro Bowlers. That doesn't happen very often, and especially for a Saints team who loves to trade their picks. Now you're stuck in just this purgatory of drafting offensive linemen. So you had. Lattimore, Ramchick. Kamara. Uh, Was it Marcus? Uh, uh, Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams. Alvin Kamara, Alex Anzalone, and Trey Hendrickson. Wow. Wow. Trey oh, Hendrickson. That's that five. A, that's the huge getaway. Yeah. I mean, you trade Hendrickson for... Peanut. For Marcus Davenport and, and, Peyton, and this Peyton Turner. Turner. I mean, meanwhile, this guy's a, a perennial pro bowler I, or all pro. <laughs> 12 times a sack. And these guys can't get to a second contract. I legit remember when the Saints drafted Peyton Turner. I was like, I've mm -hmm. never even heard that name. Like, never. I had never heard the name I'm before the draft, like, I'm before draft day. And I keep up with, like, draft guys coming out of college a lot. Like, like enough to where I would know that there's a guy coming out of Houston that's good enough to be drafted in the first round. And they call his name, and I was like, who trade up for him? Like, I mean, like, traded picks away for this dude, and he, he can't play. <laughs> can't play at all. Did like, it twice. Same thing with Davenport. Did the same thing with Davenport. And the same thing for Penning. I mean, and like, it's like at some point you're that irresponsible with draft picks. So you're gonna you deserve get, it. You're gonna be in this and, position and where you're like, fellas, we don't have any tackles left. 
You're like, what do you mean? Like, uh, we don't have a we, <laughs> Ramchek's knee is degenerate. It, we don't have a tackle on the on Let the, the roster. Walk. Go get the tackle from North Dakota State. I mean, can he play? I don't know. I don't, Trade it up to get him too. I'm telling you, Saints are Saints are headed fast. And I'm not a I'm not a small school like telling saying small school guys can't play because they do have some guys that come from small schools that can play. But if you notice, all these guys have been from smaller Division One programs that and they haven't panned out. Marcus Davenport, UTSA. I mean, you could call Houston smallish with Peyton. It Turner. was at the time. It was smaller than it is now. Trevor Penning, North Dakota State. Is that right? Right. And then you look at when they go. Lattimore, Ohio State. Ramchek, Wisconsin. Marcus Williams, Ohio State. Alvin Kamara, Tennessee and Alabama. And then Alex Anzalone, Florida. And I think Trey Hendrickson. My, I, I don't. I really don't know where Trey Hendrickson played his college ball at. Uh, Hendrickson was Cincinnati. I feel that feels right. Yeah, he put <sighs> Cincinnati. Florida Atlantic. Ah, Cincinnati. So, Ugh, gross. Sorry. I mean, that's a smaller university, but it's still, you know. So the Saints could have had Tyler Smith, offensive tackle, pro bowler. Tyler Linden bombed center, pro bowler. Just on the offensive line, I'm just looking at the guys that went after you traded up for Trevor Penning. And there's the, you know, when you miss on skill positions, I feel like that's okay. But you've got some guys, that's two right there that you probably wouldn't even have to move to get. And you're kind of stuck in this limbo of not having an offensive line. And it's probably the worst place to be in football where you oh. can't even be excited about the draft. Oh, man. I mean, you got so much work to dig yourself out of a hole that you've put yourself into. Like, make no mistake about it. It's not anybody else's fault with their own. And, I mean, at some, time, at some point in the NFL, you play this game, game with the NFL salary cap. You're going to have to pay the piper at some point. And, and we've been saying that it feels like – for near, you know, almost a decade. a decade, really. I mean, going back to those those breeze runs towards the end, and then definitely at the end where you were stacking the roster, you were spending money, and you were saying, "Look, they're going to keep bloating the salary cap. They're going to keep mo- moving the salary cap. They're going to keep moving the goalposts." And you were saying, "All right, all right, all right." But then you look up, the window, and I mean, the window, the it's, window. It, it, you're just you're you're so deep into the the hole. It's like, man. You know, welcome to purgatory of the NFL, where you'll be picking between one and fourteen for what feels like the next five years, at least, at least. And with the management that's in place, the scariest part about the Saints is there's going to be no repercussions. There's going to be nobody that realistically, realistically, has their job on the line. Saints could have. I mean, ultimately, you're going to need Mickey Loomis to, to say. Hey, look, I got different interest other here in Benson Properties, Benson Enterprises that I'm going to focus on because it surely doesn't feel like it's the Saints, right? I mean, let's let's all be honest. I mean, you're overseeing the Pelicans, you're looking here, you're horse racing, you got, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all, I, I get it. I mean, it's a huge portfolio of a, of a billionaire's funds, but. You know, I mean, the paying public who's supporting the NFL team is starting to recognize. I mean, some of the what you saw last year of the 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 secondary market, the tickets being sold to opposing teams, you know, people booing and looking at the at the suite that that Loomis and and Benson were sitting in. I mean, people are starting to feel it like, you know, and and then you look up in April and you don't have a tackle on the roster and it's gonna it's gonna get bad in the dome next season <laughs> oh. for New Orleans. Like I mean, there are going to be some some instances where it's gonna feel like the '80s in there. And for you kids who grew up in this Sean Payton era and Drew Brees era of football, Christian, I'm talking squarely to you. 18 years old, get you the got bags. No out. idea. I mean, Stewie, you to a degree. Yeah. 27. Well, I mean, at what point did you truly start watching Saints football? At what year? I mean, I, I remember Aaron Brooks. So you remember? Okay, it, like, that I wasn't remember. the worst of the Saints. No. They were still making playoff yeah, they pushes were making then, the playoffs, right? Like, I'm I talking about remember. like Archie Manning, early Bobby A. Bear, early Bobby days Bobby. of like That's Ruben cool. Mays, and I don't even know who that is. Yeah, I mean, like you uh, talking about people wearing bags on their head, 
calling for the franchise, throwing, threatening to fight Tom Benson in Tiger Stadium. <laughs> I mean, whoever's idea it was to start playing Saints game in Baton Rouge after Katrina and have some of the Saints fans come down here, boozing during the day on the and and Benson walking into the state like it was uh, mayhem. Yeah, I was I was still young mayhem. at that time, but I remember that. The Breeze Peyton era was incredible to witness because of you know being around for days like that. For those of you that were born in and started watching, I say this to my son all the time. I mean, one of his first games he ever went to as a Saint was the NFC Championship. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, like, it was, it was a bad one, but still, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was it's maybe the toughest ticket ever. I, <laughs> I mean, you know, it was like, yeah, I mean, this trip to a Super Bowl in a line. I'm like, buddy, don't get it twisted, man. I mean, like, if this happens today, this is monumental. I mean, this has only happened once. Mm -hmm. Once. And I mean, the the announcer nearly had a heart attack on the air. Pigs have flown. Hell is frozen over. I mean, the Saints are going to the Super Bowl. That's what it was like. They were about to enter an era, it feels like, that if they ever make that run again, that's what it'll be. Yeah. Like, it'll be they've climbed out of Ew. the NFL graveyard. Because every single day it feels like, I mean, it, they're going to screw this draft up. Oh, yeah. Sure. They're going to screw this draft up. I mean, like, they need a tackle. They have to have a tackle. They don't have a tackle on the roster. It's almost like, look, there's only one answer on the test. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, which position should we draft, guys? You're like, well, I mean, you don't have to ask the room. There's only one answer. You need a tackle. Uh, they're gonna, they're, I think we they're should go trade, safety, fellas. They're going to trade up and get a defensive end. <laughs> they could. I mean, there's a world where you trade up and then you, tra you trot Trevor Penning out there and say, look, this is what we got. See year, if you can do it. The one year you don't trade up, Mahomes gets taken. <laughs> they had Lamar Jackson on the board, traded up to get Peyton Turner. Or is it Marcus Davenport? That Marcus was Davenport was 28. Yeah, he got drafted 28. I so mean, yeah. it feels like the Saints and Patriots are about to fist fight for the one and two pick for the next five years. Hey. Garrett Nussmeyer. And they'll screw up the number one pick. The Nussbus. Nussbus, baby. If the Saints do get, if they're worth any of their salt, which I don't feel like they are, if they do get their first or second pick, you have to trade back. Get picks? Yeah, you got yeah, Derek yeah. you, you you Carr as many under contract. As you can get. <laughs> yes, it's a. Uh, right. Too many bit nickels. Shador ain't coming. Uh, no, 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 I mean, Dion, Dion is building a fence around people like Mickey Loomis right now. Yeah. I mean, he told you yesterday mm -hmm. there's franchises out there we definitely won't play for staring at Money Mick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't even think about it. Oh, buddy. he was in the building yesterday chewing his gum. Mick? Yeah. Oh, he's here every year. Easy, easy drive over. Yeah, easy day off. Hey Brian, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. Tea time. <laughs> yeah. You club one o'clock. Where, where you playing today? <laughs> you come with me. We can play English turn. Uh, I mean, <laughs> have you ever met Derek Carr? <laughs> this is his brother David. I just bought him a racehorse. <laughs> Going to the track with Tom's money. <laughs> Daddy Tom. I mean, just get your bags out. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it feels like it's coming, man. Uh, don't forget Gordon McKernan. We're part of the G-Squad. So should you be. If you get in a car accident, call Gordon today. The number's easy. 225-888-8888 or online at getgordon.com. Uh, you see Flaugé rap and a lot of NIL athletes. It's not just at LSU. It's all over the state. Gordon supports athletes all over the state of Louisiana. He is Louisiana. He's like us online. Getgordon.com. 225-888-8888. Getgordon.com. Get Gordon. Get it done today. Uh, we'll be back with you on Monday. Everybody have a good, safe, holy weekend. Happy Easter to you. Be safe out there. Whoever you're celebrating to, everybody have a safe celebration. We'll be back with you on Monday morning, 7 a.m., long and rested after a long weekend. Happy Easter. Jordy Collada Show Daily brought to you by Click Here. We'll talk to you Monday morning. Friday from 7 to 9.
Yeah, you see the notification, we about to go live. We got all your favorite guests, we got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show, come have a good time. It's the hottest show around, we ain't got a flex. Call up G, we get it done, we earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in, where they going next? Throw up the L's, now we lit, band playing next. From the booth to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live, mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show, yeah. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification, we about to go live.